Cams, cams, cams. While camshafts can and do go out, oftentimes something else is to blame. Here are 10 things to look for before calling foul on your camshaft core. Number one is going to be coil bind. Coil bind is when a spring compresses solid before or during full camshaft lift. This will result in bent push rods, drop valves, and flattened camshaft lobes. Number two is right behind it with retainer to valve seal bind. That's when the distance from the top of the valve seal to the bottom of the retainer must be greater than the valve's lift or they will bottom out and hit. This is a very common cause of early camshaft failure. Number three, improper valve train control. If the valve train is out of whack, it can tear stuff up. Make sure you have the right springs for your application. Since they are the longest gap, the push rods are the first to flex, so make sure they are thick enough. And too much lash or not enough plunger preload can hammer components and tear stuff up. Now number four is gonna hurt some people's feelings, ignition cut rev limiter. While banging off the rev limiter may sound cool, Spintron testing suggests you probably shouldn't be doing that. Now what happens is it cuts the spark to the cylinder to limit the revs, and in the meantime, it's still filling with fuel. So now we've got twice the fuel. By the time the spark comes around, this significantly increases cylinder pressures. By the time it lights back up, bangs through the valve train, not good. Improper cleaning of roller lifters is number five. Dirt and debris is the number one cause of lifter failure. Dirt gets in all these little passages and keeps it from pumping up, causing a lot of play and a lot of damage. What you wanna do is clean these in mineral spirits and then re-soak in oil. Number six is gonna be oil contamination. Now an engine can never be too clean, period. During a rebuild and after a rebuild, especially after a heavy mechanical failure, debris left in the oil passages acts like sandpaper. It gets in all the bearings, stops them up. Most times after a bearing failure, there's debris behind the bearing. You gotta watch for that. Get your bottle brushes out, clean, clean, clean those oil passages, and then clean them again. Number seven is gonna be insufficient oiling or high oiling temperatures. The four R's of oil are the right oil, at the right place, at the right time, in the right amount. Not enough oil, bad for your engine. Oil temperatures often rise as a result of mechanical damage. If you've got high oil temperatures, you need to start looking elsewhere. Once the oil temperature goes up, it cooks the additives and fails to protect the parts. Oil acts like a padding between the mechanical parts. A good rule of thumb is 10 pounds of oil pressure for every 1,000 RPMs. Number eight, the Ocho, improper break-in of flat tappets. A flat tappet is basically metal on metal and require a dedicated break-in oil. Break-in valve spring pressure should be between 80 and 100 pounds at the seat. Dual springs are run in on the outers only, and special low pressure break-in springs and low ratio rockers are also available. You wanna coat all contact surfaces with assembly lube. You wanna get the engine started fast and run for 20 minutes. After break-in, you wanna change the oil and filter, and then again after 500 miles. Number nine is gonna be improper break-in of roller lifters. Don't let these little wheels fool you into thinking they don't need attention. Particulate contamination is the biggest cause of failure. This can be caused by material shed with too aggressive of a break-in oil. Use the right one. Unlike a flat tappet cam where damage is instantly obvious, roller cam damage may take a few thousand miles to fully fail. Break-in is essential. Lastly, number 10, mechanical interference. Mixing and matching parts to make power leaves plenty of room for things to rub and touch. You wanna to check all moving components through their full range of motion like these rocker arms for interference. Also double check any reused parts and make sure that they're up to spec. Lifter bores in particular can oval out and bind the lifter and wipe out a cam lobe or worse. So there you have it. There's our top 10 things to look for before blaming your cam. Don't rush to race, check the specs, follow proper procedures and take your time. That's the most important thing. Oftentimes when a cam goes bad, other things are to blame. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call the cam help line at 1-800-999-0853.